<clears throat> Are we on? We're on? Okay, good morning. Good morning, everyone. It's Saturday morning. Not for me, but I don't know. Hey, it's happy Saturday, everybody. Um, I've I've got it inside me today to do something about out of band management so I thought I'd do a quick live stream because it's quicker for me to push the information out there it may not be absolutely perfect but it's in my head and I want to get it out uh, I could do a proper video on it so if anyone watches this and is interested in a deeper dive give me a shout and I'll put something more professional together so out of band management what is that I think when you start your career uh, when you're a network associate level like you just you just maybe it's your first job second job whatever you're going to be doing a lot more hands-on than you are when you're at a higher grade at a higher grade it's all like ivory tower stuff you're sitting in this seat <laughs> telling everyone else what to do kind of thing designing architecting that sort of thing right and that's all well and good you've earned your rest but for the rest of us when we're sat at this associate level we're going to be doing a lot of hands-on so you're going to be running around with hardware you're going to be connecting it up you're going to be doing all the legwork for all of the um all of the bods let's say it like that that's a nice way of saying it <laughs> So look, I've got some I've got some hardware I'm going to show you out of band and we're going to describe that at a high level. How did it get to become out of band? What does that mean exactly? Um, let's talk about that. Let's talk about some of the tools that you'll use in out of band management and then we'll drag that out a little bit to a wider scope of what out of band means to me. Uh, it might not be your opinion. Uh, it, this is my opinion. So out of band has morphed into something completely different to what it was originally. So let's go back in the day. You've got digital switch networks, ISDN, whatever like that and the carrier would need to send some signaling and some control traffic to manage your stream of data so your data uses a different path like back in the day and i am going back isdn2 for example you had two data channels and one bearer channel the bearer channel is the one that can send the control and the signal traffic so it's out of band your data uses these two 64 kilobit circuits so you've got 128 kilobits to use um I think the states are slightly different. I think the states was 56 kilobits. So anyway, but in in Europe you had six, two 64 kilobit bearer. Um, sorry, um, opposite. Two 64 kilobit bearer channels and one 16 kilobit date delta channel. Not data. See, this is why it's confusing because D sounds. You make it think to the date. It doesn't. It's not data. It's delta. So two 64 kilobit bearer channels and one 16 kilobit data channel. That data channel was used for uh, sending management traffic, control traffic signaling traffic from the uh, the carrier basically so that was out of band out of your data band so your data is using these b channels and the d channels doing the control traffic uh, isdn 30 you have 30 bearer channels and i think two uh, delta channels but anyway uh, that's probably beside the point but you get the point that they've got all of these bearer channels taking all of your in-band traffic and then this delta channel taking the out-of-band signaling traffic and that's where this kind of out-of-band thing came from and now it's morphed into more like meaning generally speaking you're accessing or controlling or signaling something in a way that bypasses the normal flow of that data all right i want to try and get that a bit clearer but Probably that's as good as you're going to get it out of me on a Saturday morning. So you're managing a system or you're controlling a system using a path, using a data path or you, using some method that doesn't use the normal inflow path. All right. Now on a network, I'm going to flip, flip to my overhead cam. One sec. All right. So on the overhead cam here, I've got I've got a bunch of kit to do a show and tell. I'm just going to try and see which one's best. So this is a CRS, Mikrotik CRS. Um, and you can see there's a console port here. Um, I'm not sure if that's backwards on your sides, backwards on my side. I need to flip that. But anyway, this is the serial po serial port that you would access this device with if you were sat locally with it. You've got a laptop, it's on your knee, and you're connecting to it with something like this. Uh, this came with some Cisco kit. I don't know if you can focus on the, the old logo there. It's still, yeah, there you go. Oh, I had it for a minute. All right, so this was in a box there of some equipment that I probably, probably had at least 10 years ago if not longer and you used to get these in the box i don't know if you get them in the box anymore maybe it's not in the box i don't know i don't know how they do it anymore but anyway this is the serial cable so you've got db9 on one end and you'll have you know uh, receive transmit ground blah 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 and on this side you've got wait wrong one you've got this rj45 head with a typical you know it, it looks like ethernet cable doesn't it but it's, it's not i mean it's the same cable physically, copper with the plastic sheath on it, but this is a serial cable. It's called a rollover cable because the, the pinouts roll over. Um, and then you would, like in, in the, back in the day, 
you'd have a laptop with a serial port on it or a PC with a serial port connected to it. Whereas now it's all USB, isn't it? So you have to go out and buy two cables, one, um, well, you have to have two cables, one, which you probably already have, and then another one, which converts serial to USB, which is this sort of thing. Now, recently I was doing an install and I needed to, I hadn't brought that one with me, so I had to go buy a new one. And now it seems a little bit more easy because you've got the whole unit in one, USB to, um, to console, and you just buy it in one unit and I don't know if you googled it but it was like prolific something or other blah 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 there's a chip inside here that does the conversion for you so it's all in one place now you would connect unfortunately with this router I've got I'm, I'm kind of goosed um, with this new type because it only has RJ45 so I would have to basically then convert this RJ45 into a DB9 which you can do if I find another piece of kit here you'll see that this one does have a console port just the same um, but in this case it's a um, it's an RJ45 type so the cable if it would just focus that would be nice can you focus please come on there you go all right so a console there and you can plug your RJ45 console cable in there like that and you connect the other end to your PC and you configure your terminal software hyperlink hyperlink what are you on about Hyper terminal. That's where my head was. Secure CRT, putty, something like that. So just a serial cable. Sorry, a serial console connected to your serial cable, and then you can manage this this kit. And that would be, you know, in my mind, that would be out of band management because you're you're not in band. Now the in band on this switch, obviously, is and this switch router, in fact, this layer three switch, is 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 these ports, data ports. All right. So if you get a physical switch and you're you know, pushing data in and out of the switch. Let's say you've got eight PCs and they're all sharing these ports and data's going in and out of those ports. And that's what you would call in-band traffic, all right? This one is completely separate. It's a serial cable. It's not an ethernet. So it's completely different protocols, not connected in any way. And this would be what you would think, you, you would say was out of band, all right? But it's, it's slightly unfair to say, it's slightly unfair to say that because it's not a network connection. It's a serial connection. Um, so even though you might hear people say that's your out-of-band interface, and it is, it really is, but it's it's a different protocol. So again, um, depends on who you speak to, depends on how you interpret what's going on. This could or could not be out-of-band. Hard to say. But you would probably say yes, that's your out-of-band interface, all right? So just for, just to clear that up. If, I, if someone was saying how are you going to manage that out-of-band, I would say oh, you would connect to the console port, all right? You know, funny, funny thing. If, if, if something goes really, really wrong and you've got like, let's say you've got a data center and it's, it's, it's hundreds, if not thousands of kilometers away and you've got some equipment in that data center and you want to manage it and you haven't got anything like this, you need, you need people to help you, right? So you can call them up on the phone and an engineer of some skill, you're not sure which, sometimes these places are not even manned. You can, you know, if you get a really cheap data, data warehouse place, data center place, you might end up with just like a, a bot on a phone, just some guy, like a security guard maybe even, I don't know. So you can't really be sure of their competence. So you have to ask them to do this, these tasks. You'll give them, you'll give them an ID of the equipment. You'll tell it where it is in the rack. You'll tell it what color it is, what vendor it is and all that sort of thing. You'll give them as much information as possible so they can identify the device. For example, this one, I'm knackered, right? Cause I've got no label on it. So I'm gonna go to the guy, all oh, right, it's a, it's a, it's a Mikrotik. Uh, CRS 109, blah, blah, blah. It's halfway up the rack. Just go in there for me and turn it off, right? Um, so that's what <laughs> that's that's what you do. But that's, that's called hands and eyes. You're going to get this person to go and do some work for you using their hands and eyes. And they're remotely managing this system for you. Is that out of band? 100%. I mean, for me, 100% that's out of band. Because if this is out of band, this serial cable, then that guy doing the same job as me configuring it myself, out of band. So there you go, there's two types of outer band. Um, now, in, in modern speak, the most general consensus would be that you would take this, say this device that we've spoken about already, this, this, um, this CRS, you would connect the console port to a network um, console server or what, an access server or a terminal server. They've all got, diff they've got different names, but they all mean the same sort of thing. It's a physical device almost looks exactly like a network switch and it'll have a bunch of ports in it. Some of them will be serial ports, some of them will be ethernet ports, um, some of them are all ethernet or all serial, they're all, they come all in different types, well all ethernet would be a switch, that's stupid. But yeah, console, a console or terminal server 
allows you to connect multiples of this console port. Whoops, kind of yeah, the console port there. You can you can basically output that into a what you well I guess it would be like a concentrator, right? So you've got a serial concentrator, which is usually called a terminal server or an, or an access server or a console server. Like I don't know, it's it's been it's been a while, but if you look for Open Gear on the internet or I don't know what was the other one, uh, Cyclades or yeah, that's probably it. I mean, when I did my IE, we, I had a 2500 with an asynchronous serial card in it, so you know, that's well old school. Um, but they worked, they worked. The point is you've got a bunch of network equipment in a data center, and you're gonna connect all the console ports into one device or two devices, if you wanna be fancy about it, or you've got more devices than you can fit in one device. Uh, and that console server then is networked to a third party network. So not your network, someone else's network, whether it's just using a DSL line or even a 3G modem or anything like that. If it doesn't use your network, that's probably the best way to implement an out of band network solution, right? But it doesn't have to use someone else's network. It could be your network. You could virtualize your out of band. You could even um, duplicate your network and have two sets of network equipment, one for in-band network traffic and one for management network traffic. Would that be out of band? No, not, not really, but yes, if you think it means what I think it means. What's that movie where the guy goes, uh, uh, Princess Bride, isn't it? Where the guy goes, uh, it's not like incredulous or something. Like, uh, I wish I could remember that. Inconceivable, inconceivable. He goes, I do not think this means what you think this means, right? So out of band could mean literally um, from 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 like the, the the most obvious, which is a console connection, to the 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 far out, which is a parallel network specifically implemented for management traffic and out of band um, management of, of you know even 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 your your service your internal network team could be operating on that network dedicated to that network and their traffic never mixes with this other traffic you could you could go that far but that's that's a huge expense that's a huge expense i'm going to whiteboard some of this i realize i'm probably jabbering on a little bit so it might be might make more sense just to just to whiteboard this i just wanted to get the conversation piece done um, and show you some show you some stuff so that's so i've shown you the serial cable the usb shown you the console port um, ah there is there is one there is one uh, I can't really. I'm not sure if I've got. I, I don't think I do. I don't think I do have a device in here. Ah, wait. wait. So I would say. I mean, look, it's the direction the the the, the, the industry's gone now. You'll you, you'll more often see this now than you would have done even ten years ago. But what you'll see now, this is an ASA fifty five ten Cisco firewall. And if this will focus for me, which it, which it isn't doing, thanks very much. This isn't the lightest thing. There we go. You can see see that uh, that interface. I mean, I think it's reversed, which is quite awkward. But you've got four data ports there: link one, zoo three, and well, zero, one, two, and three. And then you've got two USB ports, and above that you've got a management port. All right, that's a dedicated management port for this device. You don't need to. You you wouldn't need to basically configure a management interface, a, 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 a virtual interface or a physical interface for management traffic. It's got its own management port. Now I think on the 5510, and I'm not saying this because I'm trying to be a smart ass, I, I think, I'm not sure, but I think that the implementation on the 5510 at least doesn't have a separate routing table. Now what, what I mean by that is on a, on a network device where you've got a console port, uh, not a console port, I'm talking about a management port, um, and you configure an IP address on it, it can be inside the same routing table as the rest of the device. With the, with the ASA there, we've got basically... So yeah, on the, on the ASA there, you've got basically this management port, um, and if you put an IP address on it, let's say 10.101.1, and then you've got the firewall itself with IPs in that, and you, you can't use 10.100.1.1 because they're in the same routing table. So the device will say, no, that IP address is already in use. I can't use that IP address. That's how that would work. So, uh, but but just to move this forward a little bit, in modern network devices, in fact, Juniper has been doing this for, for forever, but I think Cisco took a while to catch up, um, but definitely do it now, like the ASRs and so on, have this dedicated management interface. It's a little bit like a VRF, um, where in fact, it probably is very much like a VRF, but it's a, it's a virtual routing table so it, it basically isolates the routing instance for management traffic 
or you know, uh, yeah, for, for, for specifically for this management thing, it, it will isolate management traffic into a different routing table than the inbound traffic, than the normal traffic. So you can uh, share IPs and stuff like that because you won't see that network in the in the other one, if that makes sense. And I'll, I'll probably better off whiteboarding that. But yeah, that's one extension that's gone in the last, you know, 15, 15 years or so. But now the majority of network devices that I've seen in the field have got a dedicated management Ethernet network management interface that doesn't share the same routing table as the principal table. And, and why is that? You know, in modern networks, obviously you're gonna be running uh, some sort of IGP like OSPF or ISO or something like that. Let's say that table is broken. You, you, there's a configuration error, someone breaks it um, and you can no longer route across it or just something simple like a, a cable failure or something like that that causes connectivity, reachability to that VRF routing space to be affected but your management network isn't in that routing space, it's got its own routing space, routing table. Uh, so in that case, maybe that table won't be affected. In that case, you can always go out of band, which, which you, you can go out of band to this dedicated management network interface. You know, I'm using out of band and in band a lot. And we've talked about out of path and in path sometimes, and they are interchangeable, or at least I use them interchangeably, which may or may not be helpful to you. I'm going to whiteboard this now. Let's try and clear this up a little bit more. Black screen is good. This garbage over there. All right. Where's my pen? Ah, the best name plans. Okay. All right. Let me get my pen. All right. So let's say you've got a network device. Oh, it's going. It started well. Started well. Let's say this is a switch. Um, and on this switch. We're gonna have, I don't know, let's have an ethernet, an ether channel to another switch. And then let's have, I don't know, let's have a router, another router, and then a switch. Um, and then let's, let's have some, let's have, let's have a LAN and we'll put some PCs on it. Like that. And then um, let's, I don't know, let's say over here, we've got a server of some kind. And uh, yeah, let's put another switch here. I'm, I'm kind of making this up, so I hope it works out. There we go, let's do that. Let's do this. And we'll put over here, we'll put the network management team, we'll call you NetOps, all right? So network traffic, how does it look? Let's say, in fact, let me draw, I wonder if I can, I should put this in another color. Let's let's try, there we go. Oh, it's a bit big, that pen. Let's see if we have a smaller, smaller pen. Yeah, all right. So let's say this is, um, let's say this is the network management server. So this is going to be running things like SNMP, um, and I don't know. It's going to catch all your flow traffic, you know, NetFlow, JFlow, whatever it is. Um, what else? What else? What else? What else? All right. Yeah. So you say so. NetOps is over here. So this is you. This is you. Basically, all your PCs are here. All your team is over here. But you can see for blue to get to well for red to get to red you're going to have to go through the in-path network this is this is the gray one right so if you want to manage let's put an ip address on this one of 10.100.1.1 uh, slash 32 it's a loopback address but to get to that you're going to have to go through this this gray network um you got, your traffic's going to have to flow all through here yeah in fact, let me do a different color what's this one it's like a rainbow there we go. All right. So your traffic, you can see, flows all the way through there to get to the NMS, and the NMS flows all the way through there to get to the management. So that's that's called inbound. You would call that inbound traffic. So I'm gonna, with my massive pen, say that would be inbound flow. All right. Oops. Is it now? Is it now? There we go. All right. That word. No. Right, so from your net ops there, you're going to have to go and flow through the whole network to follow the, that's called in-band flow, so, or in-path flow, so not out-of-band. Let me just reverse that out. So have a clean slate. All right, I'm going to make that a small pen as well, because that's awful otherwise. Small. All right. So out-of-band, how do we do that? What we could do is have a network switch. In fact, let me about that one. Let's get rid of this. 
Let's get rid of that. Um, and then let's have. We do the but yeah. Let's the, um, no. I don't. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Yeah, go on. Let's let's do VRF. So we, we'll we'll do VLAN. So let's say VLAN. Um, let's give it no. Let's get keep it in blue. So VLAN. Let's say 100 is the management VLAN. Okay. So VLAN 100 would be on here, and it'll flow through this thing, through this thing. Um, it'll be routed here, so you're going to lose some um, isolation unless you have a, a, a VRF inside the router, but then a VLAN and a VLAN and a VLAN and off you go. All right. So in here, we're going to have a VRF, VRF, let's call it VRF, management, whatever. We'll give it an RD and an RT or whatever. But anyway, the point is it's going to be isolated. So we've got an isolated, we've got isolation from management across the whole network. And that would be, hmm. And this is this is this is why it's awkward to be very specific about what is in band and out of band because this looks like in band, but you could you could argue the fact that it's because it's in a VLAN and a VRF that it's out of band because normal traffic flow from uh, the users, this being their normal flow, um, uses uses VLAN whatever that is. You know, it's a different VLAN. We could say VLAN two hundred is people. I don't know users. All right, so users are using that via VLAN and VRF, uh, whereas the network's using a different VLAN and VRF. Is that out of band? You could argue it. You could argue it and say yes, it is. Um, normally, though, you would you would shy away from this and say not so much. It's still in band because it's all sharing common network components. All right. So how do we get out of band? Go back there all right, out of band. What you would do normally, and this is what we spoke about a little bit earlier for out of band, is you would connect, say, this device to a console server. And these look like switches, really. Um, but they'll generally have some sort of either serial or ethernet. So this is, let's say that one's ethernet, that one's serial. And let's say these are all uh, serial ports. I'll put C for console. And the console cable connects to the console port on the device, on this device, and so on. You can see, because this is a, this is a WAN link, that this guy wouldn't be able to necessarily connect to anything beyond it. So you might have, this might be cons uh, server one, uh, terminal server one, this, then you'd have another one over here, terminal server two, and a bunch of ports on it, and then again, console, console, and console, all right? And then you've got this ethernet port on the end. Sometimes it might be connected to a 3G modem, something like that, and then that connects to a WAN, the internet, and then you'd connect to that from your NetOps station. So you, you'd probably have some sort of VPN going over from, I don't know, let's, let, oh, let's, let's, let's scale this out a little bit. I'm going to put a little firewall in here. Let's put a firewall there. All right, so a firewall. You get it. Right, that color's not really shining out, is it? But anyway, let's connect the firewall in there. And then the firewall itself is connected to the internet. So now you've got a VPN. Let's do a VPN. A VPN that goes that goes through the internet, through the TG modem, onto this onto this server. And now your NetOps guys can manage across the VPN. Right. So that would be that, that's generally what you would consider out of band today. You've got a bunch of devices all connected to a console server um, via console ser serial ports, and then th th that device is connected to the internet, which then you reach from your Normal, normal network over the, over in over VPN. I'm gonna try and draw, clear that up a little bit. And maybe if I draw it a bit faster. Yeah. All right. So let's do it again. So this, let's say this is a switch, um, and let's say this is a firewall, and then we'll, we'll do a router as well. Why not? And each of these devices has a console port. which is serial. They also have Ethernet ports, which are connected to the, a LAN. Like that. And, you know, th those can have IP address doing whatever they want, but these console ports all connect to a console server or a terminal server. So terminal server or console server. And so sometimes you'll hear them called access servers, but you try and stay away from that because remote access servers was an, uh, 
was something from, from like the 90s, as I remember it, early 2000s, where you'd have a, a Windows NT server or something like that operating as a VPN concentrator. And those were, sometimes, those were often called RAS, remote access servers. So, so try and stay away from that one. Yeah, so ter terminal server, console server. Terminal server, console server is probably the best one. It's just an aggregator of console ports. Uh, so again, it looks like a switch and all of these devices will connect to it via their console ports um, like that. And then you'll have an ethernet port from your terminal server to, to the internet. And this would be via a third party, like like a DSL line, or within the within the ISP within the data center. You can always you can always call them. Or uh, what what's often 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 happen to us is the the ship the, the the guys who own the rack next door will put an email into you saying, "Hey, can I use your network as a back end as a as a backhaul for my network?" And we'll you know that's that's how that's how that would generally work out. Reason being. Dragging cables, fibers, and so on across an internet, across a data center, costs a lot of money. But if you can somehow get into the rack next to you, uh, you can save yourself a lot of fees from the data center. Anyway, that's that's out of band. Um, but I wanted to then just just drag that out a little bit more because out of band is a huge is a huge subject. If you, for example, had a switch, uh, where were we before? We had a switch, a switch, and a router, right? Switch, switch, ether channel, um, router. And we had, uh, and, and then let's say let's say you wanted that like fault tolerance. So you've got two switches, mm, two ether channels. I don't know, uh, and a router, like that sort of thing going on. Um, no, 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 like that. And you got your you got your PC over here. Like you can manage that again the same way. You got console ser ports going into a console server. Uh, you could have two console servers, um, but you could also, and this is where the big money is, have a dedicated network um, specifically for. You probably wouldn't do it to this degree when having multiple switches and so on. But you could have a separate um, network entirely for management, and you, you you will see that in big in big networks and big carriers. Um, my, my, when I'm doing an install, my sites are really, really small, so we don't, we wouldn't, we wouldn't, we definitely wouldn't deploy something like this. We would stick to the tried and true um, device, oof, device, console port, and then some sort of terminal server uh, with a upstream. Now we, we deploy in like the desert and stuff. So what you'll find is we'll use something called a BGAN, which is like a GSM sort of signal, or we'll use a, sa a satellite in, a, in expensive regions, which, which would use um, Thoraya. Um, or we could even use our own sat. There's very cheap KA band stuff. Satellite. Um, where you, you pay for what you use, so you can get like a, a limited quantity of megabits. And, and bearing in mind, terminals, look, you're only sending, you're only sending ASCII traffic. You're not going to, well, you might send, you might send a lot of data if you've got to do a firmware rebuild. But nine times out of ten, all you're going to be doing is accessing the CLI on this device. Um, so you're going to be sending characters, and that's only a few kilobits per second. So you don't need m loads and loads of bandwidth. You just need a few bits and, you, and you're on your way without a band. Okay, well, I think that's it. I can't remember what I've said, what I've not said. So if I've, if I've missed anything, uh, I apologize. If, if you do want a deep dive, if you do want me to be more cohesive and, and consistent in what I'm saying, I can do another video. I probably should, but I'm going to put this out there. If you like it, um, let me know. If you, if you want me to do a dedicated one, let me know and I'll, and I'll try my best to do that. Um, I do have some, we can do some like terminal stuff. So I've got some kit in the data centers. We can log on to those. I can show you that. Uh, management VRF sort of differentiation where you've got the, the routing table that's isolated from the principal table, um, which I do call out a band, uh, but isn't is certainly not something you could consider for business continuity. For example, you wouldn't want to you wouldn't want to bet your life on that out of band management on device network management um, for recovering device. You definitely want this console terminal server out of path remote 
third party access to, to really belt and braces what you're doing. All right, have a great day.